Good afternoon. This is How Money Works Essentials. This is where you'll learn. Ooh, looks like we have somebody. Barbara. Jeff Stores. Who? Jeff Stores. Hi, Jeff. How's it going? Doing good. Thank you, Mike. So I won't, um, I'm going to shut off the recording so I can start it from the beginning. Good afternoon. This is How Money Works Essentials. This is where you'll learn to stop being a sucker when it comes to your money. This is Michael Eisbrenner, and I'll be your financial educator for this session. We want to give you a good start to your financial literacy journey in record time. The first decision you must make is simple. Will you choose the mindset of a sucker, or will you learn to think like the wealthy? It's a choice. The fact that you've joined the class today is a sign that you're on the right track. Here's the great news. You don't have to be wealthy to think like the wealthy. You only need the knowledge and action. This is your opportunity to gain that knowledge that will prepare you to take the action. Financial literacy is the number one economic crisis in the world. We know the word sucker sounds insulting. Unfortunately, that's the best way to describe someone who can be taken advantage of because they don't know how things work. Not knowing how things work does suck. It can suck up your time, suck up your freedom, and even suck up your income. That sucks. Over 5 billion people in the world are considered financially illiterate. That references the shocking results of a recent global study. In the study, only 30% of the people in the world are considered financially literate. The study used a simple money quiz of five questions to reveal that the vast majority of people from countries all over the world were unable to correctly answer all five of the questions. In fact, most people couldn't answer two correctly. This class will teach you the answer to those questions and many more. It's the reason I teach this course and hopefully it's why you're here. Look at those numbers. Can you imagine that almost half of Americans don't have enough to cover a $400 emergency or to make their student loan payments on time or make them at all or to pay off their credit cards or even consider retiring? In 2020, the number of people on unemployment, up and down stock market volatility and so many people impacted, I'm sure the numbers could be even worse. But here's the good news for you and everyone in this session. With knowledge and action, we can change these numbers. So how did this happen? One way is only 21 states make you take one class in money in high school. And of those that do, they only scratch the surface with topics like how to balance a checkbook. You think that's enough? What percentage of schools teach sex ed, lacrosse, broadcast journalism? Almost 50 out of 50. Now, you can't make this up. It makes no sense to us either. Meet the sucker cycle. It's the trap of foolishly spending and low interest savings that goes on and on and month after month, year after year, slowly sucking away your potential to be wealthy, free, and in control. Every couple weeks, the cycle repeats. Too much eating out, unnecessary online purchases, another streaming subscription. Most people know how to earn money and spend it, and that's it. What about all the other options? It's time to break the sucker cycle. Think of retirement like an airplane. It needs both wings to fly. Social Security and your 401k, if you have one, can make up one wing of the income you plan to live on in retirement. The other wing is completely up to you, your responsibility. <clears throat> Where did I go? I lost something. If you hope to live on at least 70% of your pre-retirement income, you'll need to be serious about what you put away. The harsh reality is that no generation is saving enough for today's financial realities. Look at the numbers. Millennials, Gen Xers, Baby Boomers, all of them are in trouble when it comes to their second wing. Will you have enough savings to get your retirement off the ground? If you're not sure, 
Schedule a conversation with a financial professional immediately to discuss this possibility and responsibility. Even if you can get your retirement off the ground, will you have enough income to last the rest of your life, or will you run out? Here's an example that will shine a bright light on the numbers and the possibility of a savings shortfall. If you don't put enough aside each month at a good enough rate of return, your savings can fall short, putting your retirement income and lifestyle at risk. Depending upon your shortfall, you might have to re-enter the workforce, cut back your lifestyle to live on less, or move in with your kids. How does that sound? Especially if you don't have any kids. See the shortfall, the gray area there between what you save and how much you need? It should be the focus of everyone and their financial professional to close this gap. Actually, if you don't mind working for the rest of your life, you don't have to worry about the gap. Here's what it looks like when you nail it. Gap closed. Retirement savings go <laughs> This person will have a reliable income because they saved the amount necessary and got the rate of return necessary to reach the savings required to make the retirement they imagine possible. There could even be money left over to leave as a legacy. How does that sound? You can work with your financial professional to figure out what your numbers need to be. Let's spend a few minutes learning about the power of compound interest. The power of compound interest refers to the growth potential of money over time by leveraging the magic of compounding, which is interest paid on the sum of deposits plus all interest previously paid, or as Zoe puts it, interest on interest. The difference between simple and compound interest is substantial. One stays the same and one grows and grows. With simple interest, the $1,500 grows to about $8,200, not much for such a long period of 50 years. With compound interest, the $1,500 grows to $132,000 plus in the same 50-year period, 16 times more money. Notice how the curve of the graph gets steeper in the later years as the power of compounding really takes off. The exponential power of compounding growth, that's what you want. $178 saved each month from ages 25 to 67 at different returns creates very different results. Most people don't understand this, which explains why they choose unfortunate places to save their money. Now, the banks love that, though. The amount per month and the times are the same. The only change is the rate of return. This could mean as much as a 797% more money at 9% versus 1%. That's almost $900,000 different. As you can see, your rate of return could be the defining factor that closes your retirement savings gap or leaves you with a significant shortfall. That's why Albert Einstein said this was the most powerful force he had ever discovered. We've all been guilty of squandering time. It's especially costly when you lose the value of money over that time. You never get the time back or the money lost. And there are three action steps to leverage the time value of money. Start now, save regularly, and be patient. And hopefully you can find a time machine and go back and start over. Starting earlier is always a good idea. It makes a significant difference. In this case, savings from ages 22 to 30 is better than savings from 30 to 67. A hundred, almost $11,000 better after putting away four, almost five times less money. Here's a picture of the numbers that breaks it down by age. For each million you want at retirement, you can see the monthly amount you need to save to hit it. To hit it. At age 30, you need $282 per month to have a million dollars at retirement. If you wait to age 40, you need to have $731 a month. At some point, you will outpace your ability to hit the monthly savings amount required. You simply can't afford it. At that point, you'll have two choices shrink your dreams, or find a new way to make money. Only 20% of children will receive an inheritance. It's probably even lower now that so many people have forced to face the challenges of the first half of 2020. If you want to give your child a million dollars at their retirement, which is more realistic? 
You give them each a million in cash when they're adults and you've saved enough, or you develop a plan to save a fraction of that amount for each child when they're young. We know it's hard for retirement age parents to reserve an inheritance for adult children. With seniors living longer, almost all of their savings will likely be required to cover decades of expenses, including medical bills and long-term care. This new reality of longevity can remove the possibility of leaving an inheritance the old way. So could you use the money principles you've learned to save a million dollars for your child or grandchild? It's easier than you think. In this example, Dana puts 13000 aside one time and leaves it there from her daughter's birth until her daughter turns 67. It grows at 6.5% to a little over a million dollars. If Dana waits until her daughter graduates from high school, her daughter only receives about $300,000 when she returns 67. What a difference 18 years can make. Hector doesn't have a $13,000 bill sitting around, but he still wants his son to retire with a million dollars. He and his relatives can work together to save just $2,500 now and then another $250 each month for the next four years. Then, like magic, they'll hit the goal too. His son also retires with a million dollars waiting for him. If Hector waits until his son turns 18 years old, it's the same story as if Dana had waited, much less, a little over $300,000 again. Now you see why we call this strategy Million Dollar Baby. How appreciative would the kids be one day, perhaps when you're gone, that their parents thought about their future, knew how the money works, and acted in a way to take care of them. That's a thank you that could change your legacy forever. Are you having fun? Well, this is my favorite part. It's the time to learn the rule of 72. Have you ever heard of it before? It's a little known mental math shortcut that the wealthy have used for years. Everyone should know it. You simply divide any interest rate into the number 72, and it tells you how many years it takes for your money to double. It works for you if you save money. It works against you if you borrow it. And 1% takes 72 years for a dollar to turn into $2. That's a long time. Would anyone knowingly choose that on purpose? Well, keep that question in mind. We'll come back to it. As you can see, the better rate of return you get, the faster your money can double. At 3%, it doubles every 24 years. At 6% every 12 years. At 9% every 8 years. And at 12% every 6 years. That's actually the number I like the best. Remember the question about a 1%? Who would choose 72 years to double? Oh, yeah, because people don't know how money works. There's almost $10 trillion sitting in passbook savings accounts that average 0.09%. That's a lot less than 1%. When CNBC did a review of the book a few months ago, this is one of the things they pointed out to be almost unbelievable. Many of the actual institutional savings account rates are even lower. Do you see your bank on this list? At the average rate of return of 0.09%, if you divide that into 72, you're looking at 800 years for your account to double. So by the year 2820, as George says, his great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandchildren will love it. And just so we're clear, the same place that gives you 0.09% likely charges you 17 or more percent for a credit card. That means their money doubles every four years. Now you can see why the subtitle of the book is Stop Being a Sucker. You need to know how money works today, not tomorrow. Now we'll take you through the seven money milestones. It's your step-by-step -step action plan designed to help you chart the course from where you are today to financial security and independence. The good news is, is that no one is too far ahead or too far behind to benefit from these milestones. Each milestone is a critical step to help you reach your financial summit. Because of this time we're spending together, you're increasing your financial literacy, concept by concept, strategy by strategy, learning to take control of your personal finances, which will help give you the confidence to discuss your situation with a financial professional 
which we strongly recommend. The first milestone is one you're already on your way to completing. You've begun milestone one number one, financial education, with the first part of this session. You're becoming more financially ready with each page. Also remember, a financial professional is the best person to turn to for questions on details. He can discuss, or we can discuss this with you if you don't have one or need help choosing one. Here's another way to say it. In the war for your money, there are two essential tools you'll need to win. We know the best starting point for everyone is to combine a financial education with a financial professional. Take this education seriously. You didn't get this from school, your parents or friends. Treat your, finan treat your finances with the level of dedication you put into your health. Google things. Ask questions. Actually, I would suggest using DuckDuckGo. But then turn to someone you trust that does this for a living. Proper protection is milestone number two for an important reason. You need to protect yourself and your family from a possible future loss of income or savings before they begin the rest of this journey. If you were to die prematurely, your family could be left without your income in addition to being without you. Your current savings might not be enough to take care of them. How much life insurance should you have? The answer is that it's different for everyone based on their situation. However, as a rule of thumb, we recommend you consider life, having life insurance coverage that's at least 10 times your annual family income. As an example, if you earn $50,000 a year, you should consider a half million dollars in coverage. At a conservative 5% rate of return, that would replace half your income. For a more specific calculation of your family's need, ask a financial professional. Together, you can consider factors like how old you are, how much debt you have, your health, your number of dependents, your role in your business, and your overall financial situation. The same people who underestimate how much life insurance they need have a tendency to overestimate how much it will cost. Both assumptions can keep families from putting proper protection in place. As Insure.com says, only 59% of Americans have life insurance and about half of those are underinsured. Life insurance falls into two basic categories, temporary and permanent. First, let's look at temporary life insurance, which is more commonly called term insurance. It's called that because it provides life insurance protection for a specified period of time, like 10, 20, or 30 years. It's the most affordable life insurance available because it provides one core feature, a death benefit. The money paid to the beneficiary when the insured dies and because it expires after the term. With life insurance, it's possible to have financial protection for your family or business with a relatively small monthly payment. This can make it fit for anyone with a limited budget during times of highest financial responsibility like raising your children, paying off things like your mortgage or college, and running your company if you're a business owner. But what happens when the term on your insurance ends? There are two scenarios. Scenario one is that if you don't need coverage anymore, you can simply let your policy end. No fuss, no muss. But what if, after your term, you still need coverage because you're still paying off your home or you're a single-income couple? Or maybe you're supporting grown children or grandchildren? Or you'll still want it in that company? For those reasons and others, you might consider scenario two, keeping your term insurance. This is what we call the financial X wave. In your younger years, represented in the blue on the left, you'll typically have more responsibility and less accumulated wealth. In your later years, the yellow side, the plan is for your accumulated wealth to increase as your responsibilities hopefully decrease. The yellow side, the plan is for your uh, term insurance is typically most useful when your responsibilities are high and wealth is lower the left side. If, you, if these two factors flip later in life as planned, term insurance, <clears throat> typically most term insurance becomes less practical. Your financial professional can help you look at how the X-Wave could be applied to your situation. Now let's look at permanent life insurance. Like term, it provides a death benefit, 
to protect your family financially. However, permanent insurance is designed to be kept and protect you for your entire life, not just a period. Think of permanent life insurance as a lifelong strategy that can protect your family today, secure your wealth in the future, and provide for your family after you're gone. There are three important benefits of permanent life insurance. Number one is life insurance protection for your entire life. Two, with many permanent life policies, you can add long-term care as an optional rider. And number three is your accumulated cash value, which can give you flexibility with the premiums. This means if you ever can't pay your premiums for some reason, they can be paid out of your cash value. Now let's talk about what the cash value component of a permanent insurance is, is and why it can be important. A portion of your monthly premium is set aside in an account that grows over the life of your policy. The money in that account is your cash accumulation and can be used to fund future purchases. You can see a few possibilities on the screen here. Uh, in addition to no market risk and tax-free growth, income and legacy are just as just as we mentioned a life insurance policy. This insurance cash value can also be creditor-proof, meaning nobody can get it from you. When you look at them all together, the advantages of the cash value benefit are very powerful. Long-term care insurance coverage helps cover out-of-pocket expenses that can really add up. It can be used to pay for qualified services like nursing home care, home health care, assisted living care, or adult daycare. And you'll never know if or when you might need it. And if you do, the average long-term care need, if more than a year, lasts almost four years. As you can see here, the average total cost can be crippling if not covered by a policy. The cost without long-term care coverage could drain one or more of your savings assets you are counting on for the future. There are a couple long-term care options you should consider. The first is a traditional standalone policy. Even if you don't have life insurance, you can go directly to an insurance company to purchase a standalone long-term care policy, or you can opt to add a rider to your permanent life insurance policy. If it's available for your permanent life insurance policy, you can add long-term care protection to the policy in the form of a rider for extra cost. Everyone should look at this option. Long-term care riders aren't the only riders available. You can also consider other living benefits like critical and chronic illness riders that can help save the day if you face any of the health challenges like you see on the screen. ALS, diabetes, Alzheimer's, cancer, stroke, heart attack will probably happen to just about every one of us. You should discuss adding these riders to your permanent life insurance policies, and there are policies that will add these riders to a term policy as well. Some are inexpensive, and many cost nothing extra to add. Once you have milestone number two covered, it's time to tackle milestone number three, creating your emergency fund. It's recommended you save at least three to six months of your annual income to prepare for any unexpected expenses like unforeseen medical bills, home appliance repairs, a roof replacement, and hassles like major car fixes. And don't forget, costs evolve possible unemployment. Like that never happens to anybody. If you're currently living paycheck to paycheck, like most of us, your emergency fund could be the insulation that separates you from financial disaster if something happens. Check out these sample annual incomes and how much you'll need to fit our three to six month income guideline. <clears throat> there are two rules of an emergency fund. Rule number one, your emergency fund is only for unexpected emergencies. That's all. It's not for gifts, getaways, or BOGO sales. It doesn't matter if it sits in your checking, savings, or a separate account, as long as you're not tempted to use it for anything but a real emergency. Rule number two, if you need <coughs> to use your emergency fund to fix a car, replace a fridge, pay for braces, don't hesitate to use the money. That's what it's for. Just make sure that afterwards you pay back a little money every month until your emergency fund is full again. Now, there's a great place to put your emergency fund, and it's called inside of a permanent life insurance policy, but that's another story. 
Once you've worked with your financial professional to square away your proper protection and emergency fund, it's time to talk about managing your debt. Milestone number four. Before you can fully enjoy financial security and independence, you'll need to look at your spending habits and strive to reduce and eventually eliminate your debt. Americans average today has well Americans today averaged twenty eight thousand nine hundred in personal debt. That was before COVID, not including mortgages, and many have much more. And don't forget over half Americans suffer from some kind of anxiety relating to debt. When debt is removed, you will enjoy life more fully and more freely. Things have been hard with all that's been going on right now, so here are the five tips to eliminate and stay out of debt. Know what you owe. No more late payments. Go after one debt at a time. Stop charging and cancel unused subscriptions. And consider refinancing your mortgage. Let's dig into each tip starting with know what you owe. Increasing your cash flow is milestone number five. While the suckers gripe about how tight things are, the wealthy are plotting how to free up more cash flow. This means seeking out ways to learn additional income and better managing their expenses. Let's investigate how to do this. Let me go back one. So, so the five tips on how to eliminate and stay out of debt is uh, actually a whole other video. We'll get to that eventually. And um, there is actually a way to get out of debt five to seven years have your mortgage paid off, your car payment paid off, all your credit cards paid off, and you don't need any extra income or any change in lifestyle. You just have to pay your bills differently. It's all math, and obviously the banks would prefer you don't find out about it, but that's another story. Okay, so let's investigate how to increase cash flow. Here are a few things you can do to increase your cash flow. Create and stick to a budget. Develop a written game plan. Reduce spending on expenses like car and home insurance. Um, I can show you how to actually, recently I showed someone, uh, our Bolt Insurance Group, and they saved him $100 a month on his homeowners and auto. <clears throat> Drop private mortgage insurance on your mortgage if it qualifies. A lot of people forget about it, and it's just eating away. Always remember your financial professional can help you guide you through these ideas and more. There are three big moves to supercharge your cash flow. You can add a side gig. Earn additional income is almost always a quicker way to reach your financial goals than just trying to spend less. A recent survey found that 45% of the U.S. workers have a side gig earning an average of 1100 a month. Maybe it's time you get in on the action. Or maybe start a business. Low-cost business opportunities are out there. As Steve Siebold says, find a problem people have and solve it. By becoming an entrepreneur part-time, you could leverage time outside of your day job. As your income increases, a moment soon comes when you are transitioning away from being an employee to being a full-time entrepreneur with even more control of your cash flow. Don't forget, you can adjust your W-2 allowances. Some people celebrate receiving a big tax fund every year, refund every year, but if that's you, consider this. By adjusting your W-2 allowances, more of your cash could be in your paycheck all year long instead of with the IRS. And the IRS does not give you any interest on the money you let them have. But consult your tax professional before making any serious changes. Milestone number six is the big one. And an exciting one. It focuses on building wealth. This is the milestone where results appear on your bottom line. This is where you avoid the impact of taxes, losses, and inflation, and do your best to accumulate and grow your net worth. With the possibility of longevity adding so many years to your life, that brings up one question. Will your wealth last as long as you do? You have to be able to answer that question. In addition to that, there are four threats every wealth builder must conquer. Think of these as your wealth building enemies. Each will come at you from a different direction. To beat them, we'll have to address them individually. Let's start with the one of the worst, procrastination. As one quote puts it, procrastination can be hands down our favorite form of self-sabotage. Then we'll pick apart market losses, inflation, 
and of course my favorite, taxes. Inflation is also known as the tax of time. The annual inflation rate has averaged right about 2.8% for the last 100 years in the United States. Can you approximate the number of years it takes the cost of goods to double at a steady 2.8% annual inflation rate? Hint. Remember the rule of 72? It's time to put your knowledge of the rule of 72 to work. The answer is almost 26 years. So about every 25 years, the prices of everything doubles, and then doubles, and then doubles. So 100 years ago, uh, things were one-eighth of what they are now in prices. One of the essential reasons to build wealth using the power of compound interest is to stay ahead of inflation. When you know that this enemy is slowly devaluating your savings by raising the cost of goods, it should drive you to even more committed to be more committed to your growth building strategy. Don't let it scare you. Let it drive you to action. Because it height. Damn. <laughs> the, next enemy to, the next enemy to wealth building is the impact of losses. Often underestimated, it's a threat that can wreck your savings goals and force you to adjust your lifestyle in retirement. Here's a simple picture that illustrates how people miscalculate the impact of losses. If you were to lose 50% of your investment, which happened twice in the stock market in the last 20 years, what percentage of gain would you need to get back to 100%? The answer is not 50%. It takes 100% gain after a 50% loss just to get back to even. And that doesn't ever happen. It's not easy to do, which is why it's important to protect what you have. Maybe this is the reason Warren Buffett famously said this about investing. Rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. So what can you do to prevent losses? First, look at every option you you have to reduce the risk. Second, consider how best to diversify your portfolio. And third, utilize the right financial vehicles for your situation. Remember, don't procrastinate. Consider inflation and talk with a financial professional about ways to reduce or remove the impact of losses from your strategy. And last, the impact of taxes. The 800-pound gorilla of wealth building threats. Nobody likes paying taxes especially when you're preparing for retirement. The tax strategy you put in place today can determine how much money you keep, how much money you pay the government, and ultimately how much you leave for your kids. Understanding how financial vehicles are taxed can help you make strategic decisions that pay off big time down the road. If you save $10,000 at 29, age 29 and earn a 9% annual return each year, you would have a quarter million dollars when you reach 65. Think like a farmer for a second. Would you rather pay taxes on the seed or the harvest? Of course, whichever is smaller, which is usually what you start with. A farmer would rather pay taxes on the seed, not the harvest. An investor would rather pay taxes on the money before it grows, not after. You either pay taxes now, later, or never. Which one will apply to you? It depends on the vehicle you choose. Again, this is where a financial professional can help you. There are three components of a reliable retirement income. We recommend you consider all of them. Maintain potential for growth by participating in the upside growth potential tied to the market. Reduce or remove potential for losses by eliminating downside risks tied to the market and create a predictable income that lasts and prevents the possibility of running out of money in retirement with an income stream you can count on. And the last milestone, protect your wealth by creating a will and guarding your legacy. This is even something the rich miss sometimes. Prince and Aretha Franklin, both of whom died just a few years ago, had sizable estates, and neither had an estate plan or a will. Both left their families and business partners with an emotional, financial, and legal mess taking years to sort out. It shows how important it is to protect your wealth with an estate plan. According to Rock Law Survey, 64% of Americans don't have a will. Not surprisingly, the number is higher for younger Americans. 70% of those aged 45 to 54 than older Americans. 54% of those aged 55 to 64. Do you have a will? 
prince was only 57. Your estate plan is how you protect your wealth, your family, and your legacy when you die, or if you're incapacitated. It's how your wishes and decisions are carried out. There are four documents your estate plan should include. You'll need a will, your financial power of attorney, an advanced health care directive or living will, and a HIPAA release. Your legal professional can help you find and put all of these in place. Having an estate plan in place can help you avoid the government making the decisions about who gets your property and who takes care of your children. The process of a court administering an estate in accordance with state laws is called probate. Avoid it if you can. Do whatever you have to. Nobody wants to go through that if they don't have to. This is one of the most important reasons to put your estate plan in place as soon as possible. You can also help your family and business partners avoid unnecessary expenses and delays with the probate process with one additional estate planning tool, a trust. Trusts can do many things for you. Again, your legal professional can give you the best advice when it comes to trusts. If you think estate planning will be too expensive or time-consuming, then you haven't considered the costs to your loved ones down the road. The truth is, there are options for almost every budget. We recommend you put this milestone in place right away. We're almost finished. Think about what concept resonated with you the most. That's why we started on this mission of eradicating financial illiteracy. This is how you start to take control of your finances. We call it the money discovery. This works like driving directions on your mobile phone. Two points of reference is all you need, where you are and where you want to go. The same is true to chart the course of your financial roadmap. The How Money Works money discovery in the book can help you take care of that. Of course, we suggest you share this information with a financial professional to make sure you're on track to reach your dreams. Discuss these concepts and review the milestone with a financial professional. If you don't currently have one to turn to, the first of the seven money milestones is financial education. Since you've hopefully read the How Money Works book, you've already started down the path of learning how it really works. We can help you walk through the other six. We do that in two steps. First is the discovery call, where you spend about 15 minutes identifying where you are now in your financial life, and most importantly, where you want to go. Then our team spends a few days crunching numbers, searching the financial industry for the best products and services to meet your needs, and identifying the ones that best fit your current situation and future goals. Then we have a solutions appointment where you have a screen share and walk you through the steps we recommend or suggest you have to achieve your goals. Don't procrastinate. Set up a meeting today. And that looks like it's the end of today's session. Let me shut off the 